Hello, it's Daniel Hussey here. Welcome along to another one of our Matchbook Cheltenham previews. And delighted to welcome him again with me as always, Michal DC, and our special guest each week, Matt Toombs. Matt, welcome. Hi guys, good to see you. Buzzing off the Dublin Racing Festival. Absolutely, yeah. There are some absolutely unbelievable horses we were just talking off air. We could be talking about it all day, DC, but let's get straight into prices for the cross-country chase. We're going to cover this as Matt has some interesting trends here, DC, but just tell us a little bit about the betting at the moment. Yeah, so the, the market is a Tiger Roll is the head of the market at, at 5.5. Pringard is 6.0. The new Aviesi's Land is about in 9.0 shot. Shady Operator is 11.0. Adjas is 11.0. Then you have Far Class for 14.0. Back in the Lash, 16.0. Diesel Dahlia, 16.0. Mortal, 16.0. And then it's big prices for the rest of them. Yeah, Matt, we'll go to you maybe on a little bit of trends in this race. And you're making some good points to me in the fact that Obviously, when people think of anti-post betting, they think of like the champion chase and stuff like that. But maybe they don't always focus the cross country until maybe the week before. Yeah, that's right. No, there aren't even any entries to the first of March, and it's therefore the anti-post markets are often really inefficient. And with the only two races over course and distance before Christmas, you have a lot of the form in the book early on. So it is a race I try and get an angle on anti-post, and that's because course and distance experience is crucial. 14 of the 17 winners have run in one of the two autumn races over the track that season. And two of the exceptions were in the early years when Punchestown Banks form is more relevant. And the reason course and distance form is so important is that the cross-country courses like Punchestown, part of ETA, they're ancient. They predate the conventional hurdles and chase tracks. The big difference at Cheltenham is that the cross-country had to be shoehorned into the space in the middle of the older new courses in the 90s. And the consequence of that is that the Cheltenham cross-country course is so much tighter than other cross-country tracks. There are very few opportunities to gallop until the business end. It's all about keeping on an even keel whilst negotiating the variety of obstacles, then sprinting for home. So that's why experience of the Cheltenham cross-country course rather than just general cross-country experience is such an advantage. You get horses that look good at, say, Punchestown, and then don't take to the Cheltenham version at all. Midnight Maestro looked to be an example of that in the December race. And so a lot of punters don't focus on that and how much the race has changed. It used to be a race for Banks horses from Punchestown because it was either ignored or not taken seriously by the big yards. Ender Bolger, the master of the Banks, won four of the first five renewals. And Gordon Elliott's changed that. And his modus operandi is give a horse an educational run in their first race over course and distance, and then originally upsetting some of the trainers with second rate mentalities, he organised extensive schooling sessions at Cheltenham, which are now common practice. And that's led to much better horses being aimed at the festival cross country and arriving having shown an aptitude for it, which is really important because a lot of good horses try and don't take to it. You know, the first 12 renewals of this, no winner of one another race, the festival, as in the best performance in a conventional race was by spot the difference who'd been third in the old maiden four mile six years before. The race was won by cross country specialists but they were horses of relatively ordinary inherent ability. Gordon changed that dynamic. Calantra Stables has won all by one of the last five renewals by aiming much better horses at it. Of course, the courses are already won the Kimmier and the Four Miler. Great Tiger Rolls won three. And you can't expect more Tiger Rolls, but I think we're going to see more cause of causes. So each year I'm looking for either an established star over course and distance towards the front of the market, but still under bet given how specialist this is, or a high-class horse who took to the test when having a sight in one of the autumn races. Yeah, there's some interesting trends, and we're going to come to you because I know you picked out three in particular to really focus in. Uh, DC, for you, you wanted to take a look uh, and maybe JP McManus's record in this race. Yeah, so this is not this kind of a race. I, I had a, a soft pass, pass for it. I remember years ago that JP had a horse called Gerard Champetra that he paid big money for at the time, and he didn't have a an amazing um hurdling or chasing career but he he won the cross country twice and he was he was a real um a real uh, as 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 Matt was saying a real core specialist he was brilliant at it and I always kind of kept an eye on it over the last three years and this year again he's after buying a horse in France called uh, Pringard he's he's the second favourite in the know I've no idea about, about his French farm but the last time JP splashed out a bit of money to to get a horse for this race was Easy's Land who won it two years ago beating Tiger Roll. So you have to take take a good um a good a, a good view of that and again he's he's a huge um a, a brilliant record in the race like you the easy land cause cause and tiger or joss's orders were all and we're all uh, winners and joss's orders probably unlucky um another year to, to just finish second so 
it's he's he's definitely an owner to keep an eye on because he does as as Matt says, Gordon targets the race, but JP also also targets the race, and he'll he'll have a few horses in the bulger. Um, shady operator is there, I, I suppose, is one. He's an interesting one this year, but he only has punches home banks for him. He, he won over that, but he's never been to Cheltenham, so he mightn't be the one for this race. But he's um he's an interesting price there. Um, I don't really have any bet in this race yet. I the, 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 there's a few of them I'd be interested in. I, mean, Ty, I think Tiger Roll is nearly twice the price he is now this time last year. I think I think he was nearly a double figure price this time last year because he was only so bad, but he was a big gamble coming up to it and won very easily. So if he's there on the day and he's going to be around this price, I, I would be interested. But it's just anti post time. Happy enough to to listen to what Matt has to say and be listening to what you have to say. Well, listen, before I come in, we'll go back to Matt. But on the Tiger Roll, Matt, it, it was very interesting that I was just going to bring that up. There was a massive gamble on the day for him. I know I bet it, I bet on him, but it was mainly just in hope more than expectation. But yeah, there was something like a 49 turnaround between him and Easy Land. So he obviously sets the, the market here. But you maybe you take that and maybe look at a few of those trends that you picked out too. Yeah, he did. I mean, last year, he'd been 29 length six and a maiden on the flat, pulled up the November race, 65 lengths last of six and a boy in hurdle winning this by 18 lengths. So I think it's very hard to know what's going to happen. He is 12 now. Yeah, this is his ninth season in training. He's been incredibly durable, but every horse only has so many races in him. Maybe he's got one more. If he is anywhere near his best, then he'd be a huge price. Uh, but you are taking a bit of a punt. Yeah, and I'm just going to... Yeah, go on, this. Go on. Realistically, I think, like, Gordon has always said every year that this is his main target for the season, and then... Yeah. The Grand National is a bonus, so I think like if the, if he won this race and finished hard in the Grand National, they'd be absolutely delighted. I think you know this. I take that into account. Well. This this is always his kind of season target for the past few years. Definitely. Yeah, and I I think at five point five, I think that is a good price because the course and distance trends that you touched on, he's uh, at that performance last year. I know the ground came up um good for him, so we we'll probably need a little bit of that this year. But um, he was still so impressive. He won so easily. So I just think. Tiger L and that cross country course that you mentioned, Matt. I think that's a good price, and I'll be putting him up there. Um, you were kind of looking at a few horses that might be overpriced here, and one of the same ownership that you, you think could be worth a bet here. Yeah, another Gordon Elliott horse, Mortal. Um, he's got the back class I talked about. He finished second to Delta Work in the Great One Neville Hotels Novice Chase, 19 lengths fifth at the top of the game in the Broadway. He won a great B handicap last season of 147. And interestingly, he was one of a small number of horses bought by Gordon at the annual Jigginstown dispersal. And they can be worth following, as Eddie O'Leary often tips Gordon the wink about which Jigginstown horses to buy from other yards. A uh, smoking gun like Mortal came from Joseph's. He's won the quarters down this season. And Mortal run much better than either Tiger Roll or Cause of Causes did on their site of runs uh, when he ran in December. Look to handle the trickier obstacles, the banks, cheese wedges, can out a replica well. He was held up there, ran widest of all in the early part of the race, jumped the outside of the split island fences in the classic manner of a horse having an educational run. And he was still well off the pace five from home, having got carried wide at the last split island, finding a wall of horses in front of him going to the canal turn for the last time. As a general point, it's a big advantage to be up with the pace on the Cheltenham Cross Country course. In that sense, it's a good race for him running punters. The course is so tight, they go steadily and then sprint. Five of the last six winners of the festival race on the day were in front five out and weren't headed again. It's very hard to win coming from where Mortal was at that stage in the December race. He did make up a lot of ground quickly, slipped slightly, um, and then he finished eight and a quarter lengths four. So an ideal sighter. He was schooling the other day under Jamie Codd, who won under Cause of Causes. So it looks like he's going to be on board, which is a big plus. And I think punters haven't cottoned on to how well Gordon's horses are doing as a team. It's not just Tiger Roll. By giving them a cipher in the autumn, Gordon knows what is worth running at the festival. And he's actually only run seven individual horses. But in addition to Tiger Roll and Cause of Causes, both Silver Birch and Bless the Wings uh, finished second, out Sam third, Alpha Desobo fourth. His 16 runners have produced four wins and five places. And Tiger Roll won at 8.0, 2.25, and 5.5, Cause of Causes won at 5.0. Bless the Wings and Al Sam were both placed having gone off at 34.0 in the win market. So it's not as if Gordon's horses are going off unbackable prices. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty about this market at the moment, but with Gordon's record and the aptitude Mortal showed in December, I think he's a really good player in both the win and the place markets at the likely prices. And the time to be betting is before festival week. 
as you guys have touched on, um, Tiger Roll was shortened a lot in the last few days last year. Mortals prepped with a, a run the other day, so presumably won't run again, so that takes one element of risk out. Um, and I can see him being heavily backed in the last week or two, as Cause of Courses in particular was. I think he's a, a really good value price at around 16.0 at the moment. Yeah, we could almost get the... Do you remember when Tiger Roll came on board to take on Cause of Causes and he was the, the talking horse towards the end yeah. and people yeah. kind of stuck with... Quite, yeah, we could have something similar these, um, between those those two. Maybe, maybe more could end up going off maybe second or third five because maybe 17 one zero is a great price. Well, there's definitely value in it. Definitely. I mean, this is obviously his, his target as well. So as a value price, it's a, a crack at selection and, and like Gordon is a very shrewd operator in this race. He knows what he's doing, so... Great case there, made by Matt. Yeah, and Matt, just finally on those those couple of trends we picked out, so they've been going up low on the ticker. So for people listening on the podcast, the first one I have up here, horses placed in the previous renewal are 6 out of 41, 35% profit. That's the first one. Yeah, and that's a, a really good thing for Tiger Roll. Um, it is such a specialist race. There are some years where actually you could be looking at virtually rule half the field out, more than half the field. So the course form there definitely... Um, the other flip side of that is Easy's Land, who second last year, won the year before, had all sorts of problems. It's very telling, I think, that they've sent him to John Joe rather than to Ender, which suggests that this is not really a big priority. He might have gone, he showed nothing in a hurdles race on Saturday, but it might be that with all the niggly problems he's had, he's more one for, for next season. One of the other ones that uh, I've mentioned is the Gordon Elliott versus Ender Bolger situation. A lot of people still look at Ender for this. His last 31 runners on the day have all been beaten. Josie's orders did get the race on the technicality. And Gordon Elliott, as mentioned, has had four winners and five places from 16 runners. So you kind of know what you're going to get with Gordon's horses. Uh, he's prepped them. They've had their, their sight of runs. He knows that the horses he runs at the festival are going to take to it. Um, so I think that whether you're playing in the winner or the place market, he will continue to provide value over the next few years because punters don't place enough emphasis on looking at this race anti-post. Absolutely. And the final one then, 14, I mean, we touched on this at the start, 14 of the, the 17 winners had contested one of those two autumn races that season over course and distance. So that's crucial for looking at. And that's kind of where we're, we're going with the moral angle, I guess. Uh, absolutely. And Pringle could be anything. DC was touching on him. But he's never run uh, over this course and distance. Easy's Land had the advantage of running in the Carmel Waters, one of the handicaps in the autumn, to get a feel for it. The other thing about Prengard is other than uh, one run a long time ago on the flat when he was well beaten, he's run all the time on really testing ground. Actually, he's got a half-brother who's uh, got good ground for him, so he may handle it. But those are two really big question marks about him. He could bolt up by 10 lengths, but it's quite possible that he won't take to it. Brilliant. Listen, Matt, DC, thanks a lot for joining us for the cross-country preview.